Hello again, my friends. This is Kunita, and I greet you warmly in the name of our risen Lord, Yeshua, Almighty God. And I welcome you back to the podcast this evening on a uh, rainy, blustery Monday night. We've got a cold front passing through, and I think uh, as of tomorrow, we'll go back to the uh, normal December weather that we should have had instead of the uh, 60 degree stuff that we've been enjoying for the past all oh, three or four days. You know, my friends, this morning when I was doing my devotionals and some study, and I, as I usually do early in the morning, I was reading some of the works of a man named J.C. Philpott, who lived a couple of hundred years ago. And the words he wrote resonated deeply within me. And, and this is often the case as I read the uh, writings of men of God through the centuries, because the truth of God, the living truth, walks through the centuries and greets all of us in that spot within our hearts. And therefore we witness unto each other, even through the ages. And what he wrote was, I thought, especially appropriate for our day of easy believism, Sunday Christianity, and the light, light-hearted profession that many have. Hear what he said, my friends. The grand delusion of our day is that some from ignorance, some from self-righteousness, some from hypocrisy, and some from presumption all claim the promises of Scripture as their own, without any of them having any internal mark of His grace being in their hearts. May the Lord keep us from walking on such perilous ground and treading such dangerous paths. Amen. Amen. You know, the truth is, that if we are truly travelers on Zion's road, my friends, we will all, all of us, each of us, have our various evidences that mark us as children of God. A fear of God in a tender conscience, a cleaving to the people of God, a burning love for the living truth in its purity and power, the earnest desires of the soul and the budding hopes of the spirit. A separation, a cleavage from the world. And a spirit of humility, meekness, and even quiet assurance. As we, as we take on a newness and a fullness of life as we progress in our walk with the Lord. But the one witness that we should all have within our souls and within our spirits that should almost glow out to, world, to the world around us is an overwhelming spirit of grace and supplication blossoming and calling out to our Heavenly Father on a continual, continuous basis from deep within our hearts. As breath is to life and light to the eye, prayer is to grace. Pouring out the soul to the Father of lights in unutterable spasms, a free will offering, solemnly, eternally, devoted to him, binding one to another, uniting as one, a hidden fire trembles in the breast, the burden of a sigh, the falling of a tear, when none but God is near. He delights in trembling lips, 
entering heaven on wings of tender supplication. Oh, my friends, a life in living prayer, a life in supplication is something very different from a habit of prayer before you eat, a formal prayer recited in company, or a bedtime prayer with your children. These, as important as they seem in our daily life, are often only the fleshy imitations of one going through the act. We see it around us every day. But in the heart of the Lamb of God, my friends, there burns the constant fires of the interceding breath of the Holy Spirit. It is a steady witness that sets us apart from other men. It is a steady lifting up of the heart unto the Lord, a gentle panting after him as the deer pants after the water brooks. That continue pouring out of the soul before him with its sighing and groaning for a word of grace, a touch of his hand, or that, that sweet communion on the mercy seat which marks the fullness of the living spirit within us. My friends, all of this cannot be counterfeited. Such a close, private, inward, vital work and walk is out of the reach and out of the taste of the Sunday Christian and the casual believer striving in the flesh to commune with the spirit. But in this path, my friends, in this solitary, rocky path, a path of constant prayer, intercession, and communion, does the Holy Spirit lead every member of the living family of God as they walk, as they walk in it with him, as they partake of the goodness of the living God. They come in as one into the fullness of the living God. In prayer, do we touch the face of God? Inexorably, are we lifted up above the realms of time and sense, swept away into an ambience of seraphic luster, shimmering as the morning dew in the early sunlight. Here, the hand of God caresses the willing heart.